Today's Routed World, Understanding Routing in the Current Generation. Well, welcome to CBT Nuggets BSCI video series. Whether you're here for certification purposes and looking to pick up that CCNP, or whether you're here to just add a ton of routing skill to your to your tool belt and your experience for the on-the-job placement, uh, this series I think you're going to really enjoy. Uh, my name is Jeremy Chara. I am a CBT Nuggets uh, trainer and have been doing training for going on 11 years. I've been focused in the Cisco world for about 8 of those 11 years and uh, really focused in on IP telephony, but I'll tell you what, my true passion is still here in the routing and switching world. Um, so what we're going to do in this opening video is to go through first off what this series is all about what you can expect to learn by the time you're done with the BSCI video series second we'll look at the current CCNP certification track from Cisco for those of you that are interested in certification I'll go over what the tests look like nowadays because if it's been a little bit since you've taken a Cisco certification exam boy are they different and boy are they tough <laughs> they've they've become much more difficult and in a good way. They're much more real world. And then finally, I'll give you a, a flyby view of today's routed world before we get into the nitty gritty details and walk through the rest of the series. The Building Scalable Cisco Internetwork series at its core is all about routing. You are going to immerse yourself into routing protocols in the depth that you really need for a modern, large, or enterprise class network. Now, coming from the CCNA environment, you got some experience with routing protocols. You know how to set up RIP, EIGRP, and even in the, the new CCNA, now they're talking about OSPF, and you get some OSPF experience as well. But it's always just the tip of the iceberg. That's, that's what I like to think of the CCNA as. It's a great certification because what it does is sort of take mountains of technology, all these mountains that Cisco has of switching and routing and uh, even a little bit of security security in the uh, CCNA and it kind of does this you know right across the top of all those mountains and sort of clips off the tip of the iceberg which is fun because you get to just get a little piece of everything but nothing in all of its depth so what the CCNP certification track is designed to do is take you down the mountains. To take you down each one of those mountains of technology BSCI being specifically geared towards routing we're going to take a look at every single one of these routing protocols that you see on the screen. EIGRP, everything about it. OSPF, everything about it. You're going to see, you know, in-depth, nitty-gritty debugs. You're going to see setup. You're going to see multi-area configuration, summarization, everything that you can do. <laughs> I, I, I got to be careful with those statements almost everything you can do with OSPF in a production network. We'll even look at some protocols that didn't come up in CCNA, and that is ISIS and BGP. ISIS is actually the protocol of choice for many service provider environments because it has the ability to scale larger than any other routing protocol out there with the exception of BGP. BGP being the protocol of the internet that ties all of the networks around the world together. That is my favorite protocol, even though it's the worst one on the planet. <laughs> it's the designed to be slow. It is my favorite protocol because of all the options and tunability that you get with it. That, I'm telling you, that's going to be an exciting part of this series. We'll also get into multicast, which is a topic that sort of is important in the IP version 4 world. It's, you know, it comes up here and there. You hear this term of multicast and how great it's going to be, but really it's going to be huge in TCP IP version 6, which happens to be the final topic of this series. TCP IP version 6 is, I, I don't mean to sound over enthusiastic about all this stuff, but it's going to be great. It's been out for a good decade. I mean, people have been uh, hearing about it and, oh, it's coming someday and someday we'll see it and all of this. Well, guess what? It's here. It is here in many places, especially outside the United States, and it's becoming more and more popular. As the years go on, <laughs> I'm even tempted you know, to back off and say as the months go on, you're going to see more and more and more of this protocol, so why not get started learning what the foundations are, how the addressing is going to work, what subnetting is going to look like. <gasps> You mean subnetting didn't go away? That's right, we still have subnetting. So we'll take a look at TCP IP version 6, essentially the foundations. You're going to be able to 
set up your Cisco routers to run TCP IP version 6, and we'll even throw OSPF in there to where we'll be, we'll be able to set up routing using OSPF version 3, which is the one geared for TCP IP version 6. Now I know many of you are here for certification reasons, meaning you are looking to pass the Cisco BSCI exam. Well, as I mentioned at the very beginning, much has changed in the CCNP series from the, the tests of years ago. The tests have now become very real world, which has me excited. Because if there's one thing I hate, it's teaching to kind of a test environment, meaning uh, this, is, this is, let me give you an example of teaching for a test environment. Okay, we've got some bullet points here, and uh, you, you won't really need to know these for the real world, but here's what you need to do. Highlight this, highlight this, and highlight this. You'll want to memorize those facts because they're going to drill you on the exam. What's that all about? Why on earth would you memorize facts that you're never going to find useful in the real world just to pass a test? And that leads me to the next point. Why on earth would you have a test that is asking you questions on things you'll never use in the real world? That's what Cisco said, and that's why they revised the entire CCNP track. I'm going to take you to that URL that's on the screen right now, which is the kind of the, the source of all things certification in the Cisco world. I'm going to jump over here, and you can see this is when you go to that uh, certification links, it'll redirect you to this page, which shows you every major certification track that Cisco has, everything beginning with the CCNA. Now, BSCI is part of the CCNP track and also bleeds over into the CCIP track. Um, but when you click on CCNP, you see the four exams, BSCI, BCMSN, ISCW, and ONT, that makes CCNP certification possible. Um, now, like I was saying, Cisco has revised their exams to be very real world. And if you look, and if you just choose the BSCI right here on the exam, this is, everybody, you know, always wonders, where do I get information about the exam? This is the best place for it right here. You have the, uh, you know, the test number that you want to register with uh, Sylvan Prometric or VIEW. Those are the two major testing companies that you can see right here. You have the length of the exam, the certifications that it applies to, um, the exam policy and requirements and all of that sort of stuff. You've got, you know, going down the description, at, right below, every single topic that is on the exam is listed in bullet point format. Now, of course, those bullet points aren't like, you know, know how to change the host name of a router. It's more of like, explain functions and operations of EIGRP. <laughs> Whoa, you know, that's a big concept. You know, configure EIGRP routing and everything that goes with that. So these are really umbrella topics. And whenever I'm preparing to take a certification exam, I'm, by the way, a certification monkey. I love getting certifications. It's just, I don't know, that's what I do. So the uh, I always print out the exam objectives and keep them by my side. And as I study for them and prepare for them, I just run a little highlighter over each one. Once I feel confident in an area, whoosh, Highlight it. It's good to go. I'm ready in that section. So you'll find that as you walk through this C the uh, CBT Nuggets video series, you will find all of the topics that line up to what you find in this outline. And of course, this is my favorite part, prepare you for the real world. As I mentioned, there's, there's nothing I detest more than just talking about certifications in the sense of, oh, you know, prepare for this, you'll never really use it. And that's the great thing about Cisco certification. Everything that I talk about in this course is going to be so geared towards the real world. You're going to see constant live demonstrations of setting stuff up. You're going to see constant demonstrations of here's how you, you apply this and, and what, what if that goes wrong? Here's how you troubleshoot it. Here's some show commands. Let's do debugs. I mean everything just like you were setting this up in a live environment because that is what you'll see if you take the certification exam. The fluff has really been removed. Now, I'm not going to say you're never going to get a question where you're like, oh, come on, that's, that's a fact memorization. Sure, those are still there. But uh, overall, the, the questions are very real world. And what I wanted to do is take you through the certification exam tutorial. If you haven't seen this before, this is what the new 
Cisco certification exams look like. It shows the different styles and formats of the questions that you have in this environment. And this happens to be the same simulation that you go through when you go start a Cisco certification exam. Let me see if I can center it here. Uh, shows every single type of question. Now my advice is when you go take the exam, even if you've seen it before, go through this tutorial. Because half of the battle when you're taking a certification exam is not whether or not you know the knowledge, it's your own nerves. You're, you're kind of nervous, you're kind of shaky, you know. Even me, I, I've taken tons of these exams, but I still go through this tutorial because it just lets me breathe for a moment before the clock is ticking and I'm on question number one. So first off, you're going to see on the exam the standard multiple choice. They still haven't gone away. And I would say there's still the majority of your questions, and I, and I hesitate on that. I would say they're about 50% of your questions. Just choose the answer, hit next. Now, no, and it will, uh, you know, tell you if you've chosen too few. Now, this is a revision that has happened fairly recently in the Cisco world. All of the select all that apply questions are gone. And that is good news because all of them will say choose two or choose three or choose the best four. So you'll know exactly how many answers to select from this list. Now you might be thinking, um, by the way, I know those answers aren't right. You're probably thinking, what are you? What are you thinking? Google's not an operating system. Uh, but uh, the, the point is that if you've ever had a select all that apply question, you know your mind can mess with you. You'll be sitting there going, okay, those are the two. And then you'll see the third and be like, well, maybe if they were thinking this way, that would be a right answer. Well, how were they thinking? And then you start freaking out, playing your own mind games because you're like, I don't, I don't know how many, how many are right. So all the select, all that apply questions have become choose two, choose three. That is, that is a huge uh, step forward for at least your mental sanity. You also have dra drag and drop questions where you get to uh, drag and drop all of the different routed and routing protocols in the right place. Uh, sometimes you'll be able to use these answers twice. Sometimes you won't use them at all. For, you know, I'm just you know, glancing at these as I'm talking. So anyway, yeah, we've got all of these different uh, routing and routed protocols that we have. But um, the, the point of this question is that not all questions on the exam are created equal. There is partial credit given for some of the questions on the exam. So if you get some of the, the, uh, the answers correct, you will get partial credit. And there are also questions that are worth more than others. You will see some questions that have a heavier weighting. For example, some of the simulations, which we'll talk about in a moment, uh, have more points associated with them, if you get them correct, than a standard multiple choice question. Now you'll see this, and this is, this is uh, what makes me laugh. You'll see this when you start the exam. They will also mention that some questions will be worth no points at all. <laughs> now, will you ever know what those questions are? Will you ever know, oh, that's a zero point question? <laughs> no. <laughs> That'll, it's probably some new question that they're trying out just to see how people do on it. Just, you know, a beta test sort of question that they've put into the exam. But you'll never really know what questions are worth what. So answer them all to the best of your ability and hit the next. <laughs> oh, by the way, this is very real world as well. There is no previous button on Cisco exams. It's either next or next. <laughs> Once you answer a question, you cannot come back to it. You cannot skip it. So, oh, these kind of questions, for the most part, on Cisco exams are gone. And, and I shouldn't even say for the most part, because they are gone. All of the fill-in-the-blank questions have been replaced by the simulation. You used to have to remember what commands. You'd say, what command to do this? And you type it in on the old exams. Now, all of those have been transitioned into simulations, which this is what they look like. Now, I will warn you, beware. That is the exact font size that you have on the certification exam. The font is pretty small. But up top, you see your scenario. You can scroll up, scroll down in this, this little box right here that shows you what you are to do on the router. And then uh, down here, they'll usually have like a bullet points of uh, objectives. Like this one says, change the host name of lab A to router A. Now down here is your topology, which you can come back to plenty of times, and all of your devices. Now the first time I saw these simulation style questions, I was like, oh, well, I need to, you know, change lab A. So I'm clicking on lab A like, Come on, what, you know, where's my prompt? The computer with the dotted line represents a console cable. And you'll never, 
see a simulation question that is this easy. Change the host name of lab A to router A. I can guarantee you that. Um, they're always, I, I shouldn't say always, but they're usually very, oh, what's the word to use? Very trying. <laughs>